Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Dr. Tony Tony Chopper, and this is part three of the review for the Master Grade Wing Gundam Proto Zero. In this part, we're going to see how all of this combines together, and hopefully, it performs well for posability and uh, hopefully, the articulation and everything isn't obstructed by everything. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, and here's what he looks like, all put together, all combined together. Here he is. You can see right out of the box how the different colors actually pop out. We have the yellow, the blue, the red, and of course that white that's everywhere actually pop out. But actually that green bit right in the middle, that gem part, uh, actually looks really good. It actually stands out quite a bit, um, just on first glance. Now, if we give him the good old 360 look, um, we see that the wing binders actually look pretty decent. The wing unit looks pretty decent. Um, from the back side, he also looks really good as well. The, so far, overall looks-wise, this kit is doing a very, very, very good job. Um, I don't really have that many things wrong with the kit right now, as it's just standing by itself. There's not too many weight issues or anything. And, um, of course, when you open up the binders, it looks even better. Here he is, right here with the binders opened up. Um, right away, you can see the back side is very colorful. Everything's still there color-wise. On the front, though, we do notice that there is quite a bit of gray, all that inner frame, and all the other things that are sticking out. Personally, I would like, I would have liked it to be a little bit more detailed up inside there. And um, well, for those of you who are good at modifying, you'll be able to, uh, you know, do anything you want to the kit, really, right? So if we take a deeper look at it, though. Up close and personal, um, this is basically it in terms of detail on the inside of the wing binder. Um, there's a whole lot of mechanical detail that seems to be left out here, and um, that's a little bit disappointing in my opinion. I would have loved a lot more, um, a lot more mechanical detail on the inside. But right now we're going to go and look at his um, posability with everything attached together, and hopefully nothing's overly compromised. All right, in terms of articulation with everything on it, um, hopefully nothing changed too much. Starting off with the head though, we do notice that the head can still, it can go forward and back like that, do that strange uh, cocking motion. Also, it can go a full 360, and also it can go a little bit side to side. Because there's no poly cap inside there, it won't really move around too much though. In terms of uh, the shoulder area, we can pull it forward that much, a measly that much, and uh, we can actually move it back. It can go back far enough that it hits the binder back there, and also uh, far enough that it hits it that way as well. In terms of going up to the side, if you put this for like that, we can pretty much get it flush with the rest of the body that way. And of course, the rest of the articulation is the same, with the same amount of articulation there. Um, the chest, or the waist when it's actually put together, it looks a little bit different, and it's actually incredibly, incredibly loose. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I really wish that they added a solid piece down here instead of giving us that little measly part with the two um, pegs that are both attached to ball joints and whatnot. Uh, it's actually really, really um, like lazy in my opinion, and they've done this with uh, other wing kits as well. So it's nothing new, but man, Bandai, please. A little bit more effort, especially when uh, everything is held up by that joint, that area anyways. In terms of leg articulation though, we put that forward a little bit and he can kick forward right around 90 degrees. He can kick a little bit higher, but he's going to take off uh, the front skirt. Now in terms of going backwards, he can go up until he moves it a little bit. You can actually move this part a little bit back and he can kick back quite a bit as well. In terms of going off to the side, this is where it gets a little strange. You can move it up a little bit like so, and he can kick out. 
um, almost flush with the rest. He can almost do the splits that way. But if you actually move this backwards a little bit and then do it, he pretty much gets the full uh, range of motion there. And then the rest of the stuff down here is the same like we've covered before. And also the binders. Going on to the binders, there is a little bit of articulation here as well. Um, these can go all the way up, go down quite a bit as well. Um, one thing I'm really not um, impressive is you can actually point these forward, like with the tall geese, how his thruster pods actually go forward. The wing units can't do the same thing, which is kind of disappointing. Um, other than that, it does look very good, and uh, the articulation, it's not bad either. Nothing's really changed too much. In terms of arming this guy up, all you gotta do is take your trigger finger uh, manipulator part, plug it in, and then pop it back inside of the hand, or the arm, and it looks a little something like this. He actually can hold it out, extend it at an angle pretty damn decent. And if we actually move it down a little bit more um, so that it is parallel, he still holds it up very strongly. Um, these joints actually hold up very well, and he can hold it pretty darn decent as well. Um, so you can actually go and imitate him doing that sideways pose with that, with the twin buster rifle and him blowing people up. For those who ha who have actually watched the anime. And for those who just looked at the box art, you can actually go and imitate that pretty decently. Except for this part, it still leans backwards, which I'm not impressed with. Now, there's not too much of a weight issue even with both of the the twin buster rifles connected to him. If you can hold it, you can actually hold it out straight for a decent amount of time before it drops down a little bit. So if you want to have both of them in hand, you might want to put it with both hands with that um, that shooting pose that he has. So um, I wouldn't recommend using one hand for both too often, even with the shield. Now, when the shield is put on, all you gotta do is put it into this hole, and he looks like this. It actually looks pretty decent from the side. The colors really, really pop, but I've already noticed that there are some issues with um, the shield getting in the way of like everything. Now, this part, I'm assuming you'd wanna put this down first, and then, put the shield over, but then it just gets a little complicated. So when you put it in like this, it's gonna go in like that. And then um, if you if you wanna point it forward and bend that, it's gonna look like this. Uh, not my first choice. And going off to the side, um, it's gonna go up as far as this part's gonna allow it. Unless you turn it to the side a bit and then lift it up, then you can actually pose it up forward like that. And if you wanna imitate that pose with the the twin buster rifle, one in each hand, it's gonna look like this. Now with both of the buster rifles, one in each hand, and the shield in the left one, he actually does an okay job. Now when you're doing this, you want to actually put the um, shoulder joint and the elbow, the arm joint, really stuck in there. If it's any bit loose, it will drop the entire arm and make um, a lot of problems for you. But so far, it is holding up relatively decent. The only thing, um, a problem-wise, issue-wise, is right here. The waist, again, is probably the weakest point in the kit. Um, it does tend to droop over to that side a little bit. Uh, hopefully, when we put him on the action stand or the uh, the display base, he'll change a little bit, and it won't be so bad. Hopefully. Now to put him on the stand, you want to put that connection piece that you got earlier, plug that in there early, and then you take your Wing Gundam Proto Zero and you shove it in right here. Now with him on the action base, or the display base that comes with the rest of the kit, he actually looks relatively decent. This arm, of course, is going to be much better at holding this one up, whereas this one, you're going to have to play with it, and most of the time it is going to fall down, especially with the wings there. If you do move them out of the way a little bit though, and you maneuver it a little bit differently, it can stay up a little bit more. But overall, it's going to be a whole mess of things if you try to do that pose. So I recommend, if you do want to do that pose, um, with both of the Buster Rifles, one in each hand, I would take off the shield altogether, put it away somewhere. I know it's such a pretty shield, you don't want to do that, but if you do want that pose, uh, it's probably going to be your best option, because this thing obstructs the wings a lot, and it's really heavy, so keeping all that stress on this one point isn't going to be good, and it's going to droop down. So if you do like that pose, I would suggest you just put it in like this, and leave it and never touch it again. Now, there isn't too many issues with the beam saber being held in the hand with the rest of them, um, with the shield on and everything else. So right now, he's pretty much fully armed um, to the teeth, and I've already noticed several issues. We have weight issues with the 
the uh, twin buster rifle, you can actually really hold it with one hand up together. Um, the rest of the arm is going to droop down and it's actually very disappointing because that means you can't really pull off this pose too well. Secondly, the shield right here. It gets in the way of the shoulder parts right here, and if you want to move it up even more and everything, it's it's still just going to get in the way, which is a real pain in the butt, especially when you're trying to pull off some of those more dynamic poses. The beam saber right there actually doesn't do a bad job. Um, of course, there shouldn't be any weight issues with the beam saber, like, come on. Um, it actually holds in the hand really well, and you need to get those uh, gripping hands that look like this to put it in. Um, so that's what I did. Now, one thing I have noticed is the amount of weight issues that are actually apparent on this kit. Um, the beam, the not the beam rifle, the twin buster rifle actually has problems um, staying on the same hand. So you want to put one in, in one side, one in the other. Otherwise, if you want to move it off to the side or something, it's just going to droop the hand down over time because it is quite heavy. Now, on this side, the shield and the rifle together in the same hand will not work. Um, it's going to take a lot of uh, finagling and whatnot, and if you want to get him into that pose to get a picture, do it quick because over time it will drop down. It's not the over, It's not the most solid kit in that sense. The beam sabers fit in the hand relatively well. You have to get the gripping hand that looks a little something like that, and then you shove it in. There shouldn't be any weight issues with any beam sabers any day, any, nowadays, anyways. Whoa, I wrapped. Um, so you've got to be a little bit careful there. Now one cool thing they did with the wings um, that a lot of people have been doing is you take this wing, you swing it forward like that, and you have it pop out. So instead of having just like the two portions of the wing sticking out, it looks like he actually has three, and you can do it on both sides. And with that done, he looks substantially more filled out. Okay, the most f infuriating thing you're ever going to do with this kit is trying to put him into the... Uh, twin buster rifle blowing down people pose. Now this took me quite a bit of time to put these hands in place. Um, so I'm gonna tell you right now, I freaking hate these manipulators. These things fall out a whole bunch and they aren't very, very sturdy. Now I finally got it to go into this pose. Now hopefully I'll be able to attach these to there and um, get it to work. Wish me luck. And here he is! I finally managed to get him to hold the freaking buster rifle together. Now you can actually move it down quite a bit as well, and he does look pretty decent. He holds it in hand really, really solidly, but to get him to put it into hand, it, put it to get him to put it into the hand is gonna take something short of a miracle. Now while doing this, I've completely taken off these stupid um, cover things. They don't fit in the hand at all, and I'm just gonna make like a public message to Bandai. If you're gonna make the dim like cuffling things, please make them at least stay inside. Um, both of mine fell out, and at this point, I've just given up trying to put these things in. So if you're going to try to do this, uh, hopefully you haven't painted up already and you glue these in. If you don't plan to paint them up, glue these in anyways, or just throw them out because they're useless. Um, but other than that, he does hold it up relatively well, and I'm going to give you a quick little side shot of him while he's moving around. I would move the rest of his body a little bit as well, but um, the legs don't really complement it too well because the lower body is completely affected by this incredibly loose joint in the waist right there. Um, I really wish they did the kit a little bit more justice in that sense. Um, they kind of focused with uh, the, you know, the twin bust rifle shooting off to the side type deal, but this is one of his more iconic poses, um, you know, where his toes are pointed and he's going forward and trying to blow someone up like that. Um, but you can't really, you know, reenact this too well. Uh, especially with the thing in the back right here with the action or the not the action base the display base um, You can only get a certain angle and you can't actually angle him any lower or anything either. So um, this is a huge gaffe and um, I really wish they went back to the drawing board with this instead of producing it like this because it kind of offends me because this is one of my favorite kits or my favorite suits and He's not really living up to all of my expectations. Seemed like they tried to do too much and didn't offer enough either. So, whoa well. Now as you see the angel wings, we're going to go into our size comparison here with the Wing Gundam Zero. Proto Zero meet Zero. Um, this guy is from the movie, of course. I don't really plan to do a um, review of him because he is such an old kit. Um, but 
honestly, these two do look very good next to each other. I would have them on my display base, but I seem to have misplaced it because it's, I built this kit like super, super long ago. Um, in terms of articulation and everything else, this kit does 10 times better of a job. Color separation, everything, it is pointing towards this kit. Um, Size-wise, they are roughly the same size in terms of height and length and whatnot, but there are some differences with uh, things like right here, the waist looks a little bit smaller compared to this guy. He looks a little chunky, needs to work out a little bit. And also, of course, technology has advanced so, so far that those wings are going to fall, or these wings are going to stay on, but the angel wings here are going to fall off very, very easily. And um, it may or may not be time for an upgrade of him. And don't forget, we always have to do this on the channel. We always have to bring him in. The big daddy himself, the Psycho Gundam. Now, as you can see, with the uh, stand and everything up, he's almost the same size as the Psycho Gundam. And then again, I'm just trying to reiterate to you how massive this guy is, even in that scale. Um... So yeah, looking very good so far. Alright everyone, that's going to conclude our part 3, our deeper look into the kit. In this part we figured out that there's a whole buttload of different issues with the waist and um, the shield and the buster rifle and even the manipulators. Um, so in the next part we're going to go and actually look at the transformation. Hopefully that actually lives up to my expectations and yeah. Hopefully that does well. My name is Dr. Tony Tony Chapper, and I'll see you guys then. Peace out, guys.